There you have it, the ticker. I wonder how many people have tickeritis, right? This is the governor of your blood pressure. Boom, 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 boom. Systolic, right? Boom, and boom. Diastolic, D, the down number, blood pressure, okay? The blood pressure, folks, often goes up as more restrictions occur in your vessels, your blood vessels, capillaries, veins, arteries, etc. So that's called plaque, right? How I wish there were something natural, just a few products that would help me with my own blood pressure. Dr. Michael Smith from Life Extension, I love this company, love this guy, is here to talk to you about a few products that'll really help you find your way out. Many, many people should be helped with this product. And then a brand new physician I want to introduce you to, Dr. Ann Shippey from Austin, Texas. Wait until you hear her story. And importantly, Kyle Drew is going to honor us today. All that and more on today's Know the Cause. And by the way, thank you for joining us today. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. And welcome back, friends. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now, Dr. Michael Smith, who is a senior health scientist for Life Extension, is going to join us. He's going to talk about something right now none of you will want to leave because everybody wants to know about those two words, blood pressure. Oh, not physiologically. Boom, 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 boom. Who cares about that stuff? We go to a doctor. We're sitting naked on a metal table and somebody comes in and puts a cuff on our arm, right? And we wonder why our blood pressure is 150 over 100. So all things blood pressure, Dr. Smith is going to take the next few minutes and talk with us about Good. that. Thank you for well, coming Well, thank in. you for having me. What doctor do you go to where you're naked on the table? Well, I mean, it's what, just cold. Well, okay. <laughs> Maybe, they don't change, do maybe change doctor. Maybe there's a they don't do that anymore? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. yeah, so this is, this is important, right? So out of all... By the way, there's probably about 17 heart disease risk factors, right? Um, and out of all of those, cholesterol, inflammation, l low hormones, low vitamin D, I mean, all these risk factors we've identified, high homocysteine, you know. Right. The one that probably most accurately predicts heart disease is high blood pressure, hypertension. Interesting. Yeah, so, and that's... Yeah, and, 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 and so this is such an important conversation because it's the one that is probably also the most modifiable. So this is really important. In other words, we can do something Oh, about yeah, it. yeah. That's the, that's the encouragement, okay. that there are things that we can do. So yeah. let's talk first about the numbers, though, because you mentioned you're at your doctor's, you're naked on a, but whatever, I don't know. I don't, but you got, you got your blood pressure cuff, and he's, he's, he's checking all that. What do those numbers really mean, and what are the, are the best numbers to have? So the top number, as you said, is... Is um, or I'm not sure. I if said, said 150, this. but 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the top number is it represents when the heart is really pushing, right? right. It's called the systolic pressure, right? It's the push, right. pushing all that blood out. Um, the bottom number it re reflects when the heart's filling with the blood, right? right? So the top number. When I was in medical school, we were taught 140. So you it's said 150. Normal. That was even high. No, about 140 was what we thought in in, in the mid 90s was normal. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. Knowing what we know today, that was that's that's almost malpractice, right? That's so high. Uh, the bottom number was ninety, so one forty over ninety was kind of like that. Okay, you're fine. Go on, move on with your life. Of course, people were having what heart attacks and strokes. Something was wrong. We were missing something, right? So we now know. So so we we progressed into the early two thousands. We think the top number now, or at least in the two thousands, was maybe one twenty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bottom number 80, mm -hmm. so 120 over 80, and that's still kind of used today. Life extension, our doctors, our researchers, we feel, we feel that's too high even. We think 110 over 70 really? is optimal blood pressure. Really? Now, that's optimal. Okay. Don't freak out if you're not 110 over 70, but that's the goal. I mean, that's where we want to get most people to. Right, okay. so that's, wow. that's the, good, the good number. How, but you can't, you can't go to your doctor all the time to have blood pressure checked. So, we really encourage people to keep what's called a blood pressure diary. And even if you don't have high blood pressure, you should keep one because, again, it's one of the most accurate predictor, predictors of heart disease risk, right? So that's, this is key. 
So let's teach your audience how to, how to keep a blood pressure diary because a lot of people mess it up and then they freak out when they see like one number that's high and now it goes higher and it gets crazy. Before we get there, yeah. the little finger, the wrist, the sphygmo, the, 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 the you got you, will, okay. you really want to check it on, on, on the arm. Now, some of the, uh, the drug stores and stuff that have those machines, those right. are fine. Uh, there's nothing better than your doctor doing it or, or a nurse who's really trained to do it, but uh, those bigger machines like at CVS or wherever, right. th those are fine. Okay. But, but the key to checking it is, is to be consistent. Right, so pick a time. Now I know some people promote morning blood pressure readings, some evening, I don't even get in a, just pick a time. And make sure the time you pick is not a stressful time. Yeah. You know, don't, don't be checking it when you're coming home out of traffic after work, that's not the time to do it. A time when you're more calm, relaxed, but you're gonna check it at that same time every day and all you do is you just write the number down. Don't freak out if one reading is a little high because no doctor, will diagnose high blood pressure off one, one reading. So you just write the number down no matter what it is and you just look then at the pattern over the week and you wanna be around that 110 over 70 with a few fluctuations, sure, that's, that's sure. normal. That's a good way to, to keep track uh, of, your, of your blood pressure. When it starts creeping uh, the top number above 120, you may wanna start talking about some supplements. When that bottom number is creeping over 80-ish, yeah. time to start talking about some supplements. Which supplements? Okay, you didn't think I would just leave Dr. Smith with all his knowledge in this area with that. When we get back, we're gonna talk about inexpensive, safe supplements to help you with your blood pressure. Don't go away. Michael Smith, Dr. Michael Smith joins me again today. He's a medical doctor. Uh, what an amazing company he works for. What an amazing man. I'm not saying Thank that you. because I appreciate you're here. It. I, appreciate I even told my wife. You're pretty I good yourself, the world Doug. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, so you've been to your physician. Okay, you're not naked sitting on a table, but you've been to your physician. He's taken vital signs, and he says, wow, that's a little high. Okay, what do you do? He says, you know, this is something you can go home and change diet and so forth, exercise a little. Doc, aren't there some supplements that might help while you're keeping an eye on my blood pressure? And that's where you come into right. this. Yes, yes. So let's begin. Key nutrient, it's, it's a mineral that we're all pretty much deficient in, and there's reasons for it, and that's magnesium. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, it, I think the last I read, it manages over 350 reactions in the body, uh, most of them with the, the heart, the muscles, the vessels, the nerves. I mean, those are pretty important important structures, right? But it leaves so you us. want to have magnesium on board, right? It leaves us, so we need to supplement with it. Yeah, and it's, not, and it's not found yeah. in the food sources as much now because the soils are, de are depleted of a lot okay. of these minerals. So supplementing with magnesium is key. If you Now, if you're doing it in a, in a basic multi, you might have 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams. That's probably fine just for general uh, supplementation. But if you're really specific, uh, if, you're, if you're focusing specifically on maintaining healthy blood pressure, it's probably more like about 500 milligrams okay. a day. So I, I think it begins right there, magnesium. Yep. Uh, the next to that is garlic. It's great, <laughs> right? Cook with it, eat it. it. Yep. You know, if you're gonna supplement with it, you kinda want the, the stinky garlic, you kinda need to smell it out of your pores a little optimized, bit. Optimized, optimized yeah. garlic. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. What, optimized mean that it's the right dose, it's standardized right, it has the right key compounds in garlic. Um, gar garlic is just a cardiovascular support nutrient. The combination of magnesium and garlic work really well for keeping blood pressure healthy. Okay, if, yeah. if you were concerned about that uh, vital sign, would you take both of these? Maybe one every other well, day? Or I, no, no I, I think you start with magnesium. Okay, good. Right, you start yeah. with the magnesium, and we talked about keeping the, the diary, right? right? So if you're following that correctly, Watch your um, diary. Yeah, you could just see, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close to that 110 over 70. I'm happy just with the magnesium. Maybe that's where you leave it. Maybe not, maybe it's creeping up a little bit, so you add the garlic. Okay. You know, that would be maybe step number two. The, the middle products here, this is, this, is, this is really the products for people who really need to watch it for sure. Okay. So now we're talking about you're watching it, uh, you're, you're, you're keeping your diary dug, good, and good. you're definitely creeping up into that 130, okay. 140, over 70, 80, 90 range. Uh, th those two products are key because they help the vessels to dilate. Why is that important? Well. When a vessel is constricted, all that blood that's trying to flow through that constricted vessel, that pressure is really high in there. But if I can relax that vessel, the blood flow gets through easier and the pressure along the wall decreases. So the first one that you have to do that is arginine. Mm. That's the precursor to nitric oxide. That's the chemical compound that keeps your arteries nice and wide and open, 
keeping blood flow healthy. That's number Love one. It. Then number two, we developed, it's a great product. It's Natural BP Management. There's three ingredients. All three of these ingredients have tons of research behind them. The first one is from whey protein. Now, it's not whey protein. You take whey and you chop it up into little pieces. When you do that and ingest it, uh, it acts like some of the blood pressure medicines that we have. So it helps to, to reduce a specific enzyme that is a vasoconstrictor. So it inhibits that enzyme so the, the blood vessel relaxes. Uh, there's another one in there. It is my, and I know I told you I have favorite antioxidants. Yes, yes. The, what I'm about to tell you is my all-time favorite, <laughs> hands down, pomegranate. Ah. Yeah. S eat it, drink with it, bathe in it, do whatever, swim in it, do whatever you got. It's, it's so good for you. Pomegranate is a strong antioxidant. It boosts nitric oxide levels like the arginine. So you're going to get blood vessel um, dilation with it. And the last one in there is grape seeds. Do you like to eat grapes? Oh, yeah. You have to eat the ones with the seeds, mm. though. And chew them. Yes, you mm -hmm. want to feel it. you got to pop that seed. Yep. Great compounds in there that help to, to open up the, the arteries. Such yeah. a great, only life extension. You know, the If you don't like the seeds, though, you can freeze the grapes. And when you eat frozen grapes, you don't taste that seed, the bitterness of it, the, the crunch is not quite as prevalent, Good. so you can freeze them. Good, yeah. okay. The last one here, you're going to like this one. This is, so we all know olives are good for us, right? Olive leaf. The olive leaf helps um, in many different ways. One of the ways is it keeps the artery from being so stiff, yes. which is important. So when you take the dilators, it can open up. And then there's celery seed, which helps to reduce inflammation and manage calcium better in the artery. So that's a great approach. Follow me in your diary. Maybe keep you off those meds. Yeah, that's good. And of course, you're not opposed to taking blood pressure medicine. Yeah, Sometimes, you have folks, to. Yeah, it's it gets necessary. so high, Absolutely. it'll save your life. Yeah. But these are steps when your doctor says, okay, let's keep an eye on it. Help him keep an eye on it. Now, you can't talk to Dr. Smith. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. he and I are so busy, but you can talk to someone who is really well qualified to talk with you about any of these problems you may be having. Um, pick up the phone, dial that toll-free number, and then every product you feel you need, um, it's half price. Yes. Thanks to Dr. Smith off, and the yeah. gang over at Life Extension. Great people, and do become a customer. Okay, don't go away. We'll be back. I was introduced to Life Extension three years ago, and that completely changed my life. I was ill, suffering from reflux, and decided that I wanted to improve my health in a more natural way. I had seen different physicians, and it didn't cure my problem, and I knew I had to take it to my own hands, so I saw an advisor here who recommended that I have a food safe allergy test. Just by simply eliminating foods and changing my eating habits, I was able to change my life. And I've never felt better. I was suffering from, from inflammation. I couldn't make fists with my hands and I had bloating in my gut. And I realized that just from eliminating foods and changing my eating habits, I changed my life. It took like a week or so, but once they were completely out of my body, I felt amazing, and it's so easy to do. Like, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs>does the supplement selenium play in cancer patients or the prevention? Nurse Jenny Herbacek is going to teach us right now, and then coming up later, Dr. Ann Shippey from Austin, Texas. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Did you know that eating a couple of Brazil nuts every day is an easy way to get a natural dose of selenium? Selenium is a trace mineral that helps your immune system and your thyroid function. Research shows that selenium, especially when used with vitamin C and E plus beta carotene, work to block the creation of free radicals, which are an invitation to cancer. Selenium also helps stop damaged DNA molecules from reproducing. Other foods high in selenium are shellfish and liver. So join me and enjoy a few Brazil nuts every day and get a natural dose of selenium in your diet. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. You are staring right down the pipe of Dr. Ann Shippey. She is a dear friend of all of us in the mold movement, I will call it. I first heard of Dr. Shippey 
through the owners of these beautiful hotels out in Austin, Texas, their daughter uh, got very ill and they ran from doctor to doctor to doctor and thank God they ended up with Dr. Shippey. And guess what she found? You tell the story, it was fascinating. Well, they had built a beautiful home that had m multiple issues with water damage yeah. and really didn't suspect that that could be making her sick. So she was very small when when they moved into this house. She was only seven, eight, nine, a little girl. When, when, um, when she first got sick, and, and actually looking back, she had problems yeah. from the time that she was a toddler. And then I saw her preteen. Um, it's been a number of years yeah. ago now. I've learned, but it made history. I've learned so much about mold. Do you remember then, everybody? But, the magazines wrote you up, and yeah. you were a big name, and your peers probably hated you. You know, <laughs> but here you would help this little girl. You know, and I actually have been really fortunate. I, I, um, I actually have some of the the uh, experts in Austin sending me patients, some of the neurologists and pulmonologists and, and that kind of thing. When they get stuck, they send them to me. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Tell us your <laughs> educational background. That was in the magazine articles, by the way. So you're not only a board-certified internal medicine specialist, but a little bit more of your educational background. So I got a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Washington University in St. Louis, and then I went to work for IBM and uh, very quickly became um, a manager at IBM and was going up the management chain, and at the same time I was getting a... Um, a master's degree in manufacturing systems engineering from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And then um, I was at IBM about nine years and I got very sick. So you have some personal experience mm -hmm. with getting sick and mm -hmm. most doctors who understand fungus got sick and had to pull themselves out because their peers didn't know. Right. So after going doctor to doctor to doctor, seeing everybody outside of the um, traditional medical field as well, um, acupuncturists, nutritionists, um, herbalists, uh, reading everything that I could, and this was before the internet, I finally pieced together what I needed to do to get well, and <laughs> later out found out that uh, the people that I worked with at IBM actually thought I was dying. I, I was so sick. Mm -hmm. I woke up one morning and decided to go to medical school. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, doesn't that make sense? Because you had figured out at that point, okay, I think I know what's wrong with me. Can I help the masses? I knew there was a different way yeah. to look at medicine. Yeah. I knew that we had to really be looking at the role of what we put in our body from a standpoint of food and stress and um, all these different, uh, even how our minds work, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do we think we can get well? Um, that we needed to re really be incorporating all of that into um being fully healthy. Can I ask you a question? That little girl that you helped a lot of years ago, I remember reading about that a lot of years ago, and I had never met you. As a matter of fact, this is our first meeting, um, but I've read about her and I've wanted her here for a long time. We communicated for a couple of years via email and so forth. That little girl, had you not intervened, can you just imagine, because you see a lot of patients now, I know, would she have some neurological, because certain of these molds are neurotoxins, I wonder what the path would have been pre-Dr. Shippey if you'd have never met her, and all these people watching the show right now are thinking I can never be helped. They can be. They can be. There's, there's good answers for pretty much any illness. Um, and it's, it is hard to imagine what, what her life would have been like. And um, that's why I'm so happy to be here on the show with you is because there's so much to share that people can do on their own um, without actually having to even see a, a physician. Yeah, that's true, diet. I was mm -hmm. talking with Dr. Trowbridge about some of these diet things. Here, here's the take home message, guys. More and more physicians are graduating from medical school and seeing that as the start. So many of them laminate their credential and that's the stop. But you told me in the green room, she listens to patients. She hears what they're saying. Uh, she does a lot of testing. Some doctors don't. You're an engineer also. Right, chemical engineer. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so an I told her she should also be a dentist and a veterinarian. And, and actually, a lot of people think, oh, why, how did you go from engineering to medicine? But with the type of medicine that I do called functional medicine, it's really looking at the body as a whole. You know, we don't just have things happen to our heart. It's happening to our whole body. We don't just have wow. things happening to our gut. What's going on in our gut affects our brain and really all of our body, our detoxification pathways. So. 
with chemical engineering, we look at systems and we look at how ke uh, how things <laughs> mess into each other, so and look at and also look at things at a cellular level. And so that's really perfect for understanding the human body because it's the the, uh, the best model for, <laughs> for it, it really thinking is about things looking that way. at it like we're engineered, right? Yes. What brilliance! Now, here's what happens though. We go to a tummyologist and a throatologist <laughs> and a hairologist and a neurologist. And so what Dr. Shippey has done, first she stays busy, and thank you for taking time. She and I are lecturing at an upcoming meeting this weekend, and you were going to be out here anyway. And I said, please, please, please come by and meet my audience. I knew you guys would love her. I'll have her on more. We're going to tape several seconds, so you get a lot of Dr. Shippey. Thank you for your time today. Really so happy appreciate to be it. here. Thank you. Bedtime beverages. You ever have any of that warm milk? Well, we don't usually drink normal milk on the phase one diet. We do something like a coconut milk or an almond milk, some kind of nut milk. This is coconut milk and we heat the coconut milk up to make this elixir. This elixir is called golden milk. It's become very popular on the internet. Maybe you've seen it. And I like to tweak it a little bit, but let's give it a try. Two cups of nice, warm coconut milk right into a blender. So many of my things are blended. I don't know why that is, but I always put things in the blender. I think they mix up real well. And then it's super simple after that. What we do, just a teaspoon each of ginger and turmeric. You know the good turmeric spice, anti-inflammatory, antifungal, really, really good for you. Well, let's make it really, really tasty for you too. Put it straight into the blender, a teaspoon each, and then black pepper. The reason we use a little black pepper, and I'm talking just a pinch, that's it. A little black pepper helps to absorb all of the curcuminoids, the good guy yellow pigment, pigments that are in curcumin, I'm sorry, turmeric. Let's talk about this. When you have turmeric spice, you're getting curcuminoids. These are anti-inflammatory, they're anti-fungal, they're anti a lot of things that I don't know if I wanna say on TV, but trust me, a quick search will show that you want this every day. Here we go with the stevia. I always do mine to taste, and you can too. Let's pop the top on and blend for just a little bit. Here we go. Perfect. Now the reason that you keep blending this is because you want everything to get mixed together, including that black pepper. I know black pepper with the sweet, it doesn't seem right. It'll seem right when you try it. Two cups, and that means that you've got enough for two. Perfect. Let's give it a try. You really can't smell this one. Gosh, it's so surprising because it's creamy, it's spicy, it's sweet, but it has a little pepper at the end, and that pepper helps to absorb all of the good things, and you can wake up feeling not so sore, not so achy, and go to bed with a good night's sleep, milk-free, phase one. Mm. Wasn't Dr. Ann Shippey amazing? The story is just greatness. I heard her speak at a recent symposium and she brought the walls down. I mean, she is an amazing, amazing person. I'm so glad she understands mold, mildew, and fungus. Yet one more doctor that really understands this. Thank you, Dr. Michael Smith, for being here today. Folks, blood pressure supplements help control your blood pressure. There are five of them here and I know what you're saying. Wow, that's a lot, but you know what? It's 50% off when you call in today. And you get a free subscription to their magazine. It comes to you every month. This magazine is a lifesaver, answering so many questions for so many people. This company is squared away, a wonderful, wonderful company. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for being here today. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.